Just like today's express mail and overnight delivery services, back in the mid to late 1800s, people in northeastern New Mexico needed mail and parcels delivered quickly as well. Enter the mud wagon. Learn more about the mud wagon, stagecoaches, and other Western transportation on this edition of Artifact of the Week. While thoughts of the West may evoke images of stagecoaches and covered wagons crossing the plains in large wagon trains, the reality is these were not the main form of daily transportation out in these parts. More typically, you would see stage wagons, buckboards, the occasional Surrey, and of course, the mud wagon. So what makes a mud wagon different from a stagecoach? Well, in a word, size. Mud wagons are lighter, smaller, have wider wheels, and are generally less comfortable and ornate than the more famous stagecoach. But these are the same features that made the mud wagon a better mode of transportation for short hauls and for traversing the rough and rugged terrain found throughout the West. To learn more about the mud wagon we have on display here at the National Scouting Museum, I reached out to one of the foremost authorities on Old West transportation, Doug Hansen of Hansen's Wheel and Wagon Shop in Letcher, South Dakota. After exchanging emails and a couple of photos, Doug called me and gave me a whole history lesson on our mud wagon. To start with, Doug said he's very confident, based on the design and features he saw in the photos, that our mud wagon was built by Abbott and Downing of Concord, New Hampshire, sometime in the late 1860s and or 1870s. Now, Abbott and Downing are famous carriage builders responsible for building the Wells Fargo and Butterfield stagecoaches. He also said our model would be a short run mud wagon designed for trips of less than 50 miles. Now the presence of lamp mounts indicates that the mud wagon was equipped with lanterns so it could be operated at night. This feature and the presence of the luggage rail and the large storage space under the driver's seat indicate the primary purpose of this mud wagon was to deliver mail and parcels to the local area, much like a FedEx truck or UPS van would in your local community. But a mud wagon would also transport passengers, and this one could carry up to four people based on the space available after the mail and parcels were loaded. Speaking of the space under the driver's seat, this area was considered the most secure part of the mud wagon and is where the strong box and secured mail bags would be carried. An express man would be riding shotgun to provide security and protection for the mail and the parcels. Looking at some of the other features of our mud wagon, this model is a soft top or a round top model with a canvas roof and canvas curtains. A stagecoach, on the other hand, would have a wooden or metal roof and leather curtains. The curtains, of course, were to protect the passengers and cargo from dust, dirt, and weather. In addition to the luggage rail on the roof, the mud wagon would also have a rear boot with a canvas cover for cargo and luggage storage, as well as a front boot with a canvas cover to, pro to protect the driver during inclement weather. Now remember, this wagon was going to be on the job, rain, snow, or sunshine, as the mail had to get delivered regardless of conditions. Now I just mentioned the front boot where the driver's legs and feet would be and the strong box storage area was located. In my discussion with Doug, he said that our mud wagon must have been involved in an accident at some point in time and the front boot badly damaged. He said the damage must have been extensive because rather than repairing the front boot, they simply removed it and replaced it with another rear boot and put the mud wagon back into service. By the way, did you notice the metal rail on the driver's seat? This rail was added to the design of most mud wagons and stagecoaches as a way to keep the driver from sliding around on the seat. Keeping him close to the side of the wagon was important as the brake pedal was activated by pressing on this large lever with his foot and that was much more difficult to do if he was sliding around in that front seat. Now this mud wagon would have been pulled by a team of four or six horses depending on the weight of the load and the terrain they would be crossing. The more weight or more rugged the terrain, the two extra horses would be added. Also, just like a stagecoach, a mud wagon would travel in stages from stop to stop. These stops allowed for the horses to be changed out, for passengers to stretch their legs or maybe grab something to eat or address other needs, and for parcels to be loaded and unloaded. The stage stops would be roughly 15 miles apart and would take about three hours of travel between each stage. One could expect a whole day's journey to never be more than 60 to 70 miles. 
One final feature of the mud wagon that was related to comfort and safety were the thorough braces, which were these bundled strips of leather that the carriage was attached to and acted like a suspension system, absorbing much of the shock of the chassis being drug over rough terrain. Now these straps would be made of about 250 linear feet of bull hide leather. Because these leather strips were absorbing the impact of the carriage, it made it more comfortable for the passengers. Although I bet the passengers might disagree with this assessment and it made it safer and easier for the horses pulling the wagon. Now, if you look closely at the thorough braces on this mud wagon, they've been replaced with iron leaf springs. Although the material has changed, the purpose and results remain the same. Here's kind of an interesting tidbit about stagecoaches and mud wagons. In larger communities and cities, the stage companies would advertise that they were running Butterfield stages in and out of, say, Santa Fe, for example people would pay a premium price for the comfort of a Butterfield stagecoach. But what happened more often than not is at the first stage stop, the passengers and parcels would be transferred to a mud wagon for the majority of their journey, and the stagecoach would be turned around to carry a load of passengers back into the city. That way they could deliver on the promise made in their advertisement. Well, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time as we take a closer look at the collection of the National Scouting Museum Artifact of the Week.